Hi, my name is Karl Krukow. I'm with Trifork and I'm a software developer. I'm very excited about this uh, news that Google are launching Dart because I've been struggling with JavaScript and large-scale programs for a while. So I'm really excited to see what's happening. In a minute, I'm going to show you some Dart samples and uh, show you how you can evaluate those in a, in a special web app that Google made. And we'll look, just look at some code. So this is uh, dartlang.org, where you can try out Dart in, a, in an interactive way. So Dart has a main, as opposed to JavaScript, where code just executes as it's, as it's parsed. Uh, we actually have a main here in Dart. And the var construct, just as in JavaScript, introduces a, a variable and um, just as in JavaScript, in this example, you don't have a type associated with the variable, but later we're going to see that you can actually type the variables as well. So string literals in single quotes here, uh, and you can have string interpolation using this syntax construct here. So this example is actually just hello world for Dart. Uh, and in this web application, you can actually explore the language by pushing this button, which actually runs, sends off the Dart code, uh, executes it and sends back the result here, so we get the hello world. An interesting thing here is that you can uh, apply typing. So instead of writing var, I can write string. Um, and we can run it again, see it does the exact same thing. And as Christen was telling you, this doesn't actually affect the runtime semantics of the program. It's just um, a way to put more information for the compiler about your program. So an interesting aspect here is if I put a wrong type here, say int, which is actually also type. The program still runs, but you do get a warning from the compiler, and it's highlighted here. The string is not assignable to int. So this is a, the, the point with optional typing in Dart. There's also a construct called final, which is uh, an unchanging variable. So it all runs here. So this is the hello world of Dart. You see here in the tutorial section, you also have a notion of classes. So let's try and look at that. So Dart has classes and single inheritance. So when you use the class construct to create a class, and this is a, a greeter class. And here the var means instance variable. And methods are defined like this, greeter name, and you print. Class instantiation is done with new, just as we're used to with uh, many, many other programming languages like Java and C Sharp. So this actually creates a new object, so we can try just for fun to put typing there, which is like this. Actually, it'd be interesting to see what happens if I write something that's not a type here. Ah, we get an actual warning. So the compiler can give, I mean, the compiler is a compiler and there are errors in the language. For instance, a classical example in JavaScript is making a global variable without using the var statement. Uh, this will actually give you an error in Dart as opposed to JavaScript where this just creates or maybe overrides a global variable. So hopefully this is really going to make our lives better and make it possible to do structured programming. Okay, so... Um, there's inheritance as well. Uh, this You don't have to do this, but you can do stuff like this. This is the default, so all, uh, all classes extend object, uh, but we can put it here explicitly if we want, and we can do subclassing if we want. Okay, another thing, interfaces. So Dart has interfaces. Um, which are sort of a smarter version of uh, the things we're used to. Oh, sorry about that. A smarter version of things we're used to uh, in Java. And, um, and you write, so this is actually a class that implements uh, an interface from the, from the library called comparable. And that forces you to in implement a compare to. Um, this syntax here, I haven't introduced this. Um, this is function or closure syntax, which lets you uh, give the implementation inline, just like that. So uh, this, this is a greeter class that uh, is comparable by, it's instantiated with a, a prefix, which is a string, and then you can just compare two uh, greeters based on their prefix. So it just delegates to the string compared to for prefix. So um, I think that's it, you should uh, go to this website and, and play with Dart. Uh, I just want to show you that uh, Google has also some 
some larger examples that are uh, intended for um, for web clients. So if you if we go to the code samples here and you follow this link, you actually get a number of uh, applications that are written in Dart um, that you can run. So you see the extension is .dart. And uh, in the keynote, uh, Google actually showed uh, this Swarm application, which is a, a news reader that you can run uh, on, uh, on modern browsers and on the iPad and, and stuff like this. And also included in that distribution is an Emacs mode that lets you uh, do syntax highlighting for uh, dark code. So this is actually the uh, app, which is like the main for, uh, for this Swarm application. And you see we have browser programming here, document.registate, and this onload. So this gives you a taste of what Dart looks like when we are going to the browser and doing a browser-based programming. This is actually the onload method. So it's actually a method on a class. And we have some, uh, some event handling as well. So that's all built into libraries that come with Dart. If you want to try Dart, you should go to uh, googlecode.com slash p slash Dart, and there are instructions on how to get the source. And uh, we I, are I'm very excited about Dart. I, I've struggled with, with you know, thousands and thousands of lines of JavaScript code, and you know, Google is hitting this spot on because it is a pain. It is a pain to maintain large uh, clients in, in JavaScript. And actually, Google has, has done stuff to make this easier for us in the past. For instance, their uh, Google Closure tools uh, is actually what I'm using now to manage large code bases. And it has JavaScript, and then you put in an optional type system, uh, but you put it in comments around your JavaScript code. So I think Dart is actually, it takes, I mean, <laughs> it's a workaround, right? You add stuff in comments in JavaScript, um, and then you make a compiler based on that, but this is like the real solution. The closure compiler is good, and, but it was a, there's a workaround. So I'm really excited about this for client-side programming. And if, we don't know this, but if it turns out this is going to be a platform for Android programming and for server-side programming, and you can have these isolates uh, talking from the client to the server, then this is going to be huge. So I'm, I'm very excited, as, as you can hear about this stuff. So I'm, um, oh, just one more thing I wanted to tell you is that if you go to dartlang.org, you can download the language spec, and it's only 78 pages. You can actually read this stuff as opposed to the Java language specification, which is huge. So I think this has potential to really take off, and we're going to, to help all we can.